Hola, buenos días, amigos y amigas. In the last chapter, we have learnt about how to present oneself, giving details of name and surname, and talk of professions using the verbs llamarse and ser. You have also learned the numbers at the end of the session. You are comfortable with numbers? Shall we practice numbers once more? How do you say 38? 38. 38. How do you say 11? 11. 11. How do you say 72? Do you remember 70? 70. 72 is 72. If you remember thoroughly 1 to 20, you can know any number. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Now let's see how to say 2017. Oh, you haven't learned after 100. Remember? Yeah, let's look at how to say 100, 200. 300 and so on. 100 is cien and 101 would be ciento uno. 120, ciento veinte. 121, ciento veinti uno. You have 200 is doscientos. So you just add the number and say cientos for hundreds. So 300 would be tres cientos, trescientos. 500, cincocientos, no, no, no. 500 is quinientos, quinientos. 600 is sesientos. There is a slight change in the spelling which you can learn from the notes. Setecientos is 700, ochocientos is 800, novecientos is 900 and thousand is mil. Shall we repeat once of hundreds? Yes. Cien. 200, 300, 400, 500, 600, 700, 800, 900, and 1000. If you were to say 550, you would say 550. Right, quinientos y cincuenta. Eight hundred and twenty would be ochocientos veinte. Nine hundred and ninety-nine would be novecientos noventa y nueve. You can practice these numbers taking any digits and Say it aloud or write it down. And as I asked you, how would you say 2017? 2017 would be dos mil. And what is 17? Diecisiete. You remember when we learned 1 to 20, we said diecisiete. So, thousand is mil, two thousand is dos mil. And 2017 is dos mil 
17. So, go ahead learning these numbers and we shall do something more today. You were just also introduced to the expression k access also to ask about profession. We shall in today's session go a little further in the conversation using some more important verbs like aser from ases, estar and tener. In the first part, we shall learn how to say about different nationalities that we belong to using the verb ser. You are now comfortable with the verb ser, right? Later, we look at a series of questions which are generally asked to gather information about the other person. Here are some questions that we have already learned on how to answer and some new questions with different verbs. These verbs will be discussed in the course of the lesson and let us focus on how to talk of nationalities. First, let us look at the series of questions. Please pay attention to these questions. Como te llamas? Como te llamas? You know this question already, right? It is to know about the name. A que te dedicas? A que te dedicas? Is to know about profession. Now you have another question. De donde eres? De donde eres? This is a new question. Eres, you know, is the verb is from the verb ser. De donde eres? Eres is two form. We shall look into this question in detail. Let me just look at all the questions. Cuantos años tienes? Cuantos años tienes? Tienes correo electrónico? Tienes correo electrónico. ¿Cuál es tu número de teléfono? ¿Cuál es tu número de teléfono? ¿En qué trabajas? ¿En qué trabajas? ¿Tienes móvil? ¿Tienes móvil? ¿Cuál es tu nombre? ¿Cuál es tu nombre? So, here are a series of questions which are asked to one another to gather information. As I told you, the first two questions you already know the information about your name and your profession. Let us look at the question de donde eres. You now have learned the verb ser. So, de donde eres is where are you from? Donde means where. De is the preposition which means of or from. So, the question de donde eres is asked to know about where the other person belongs to. De donde eres. And in reply, you say soy de. Soy, you know very well, I am. Soy de, I am from. And the name of the place. If you are from within India, you just name the place. Soy de Patna. Soy de Delhi. Soy de Chennai. If you are from another country, you name the country. And in Spanish, we shall see how these countries are pronounced. First of all, ¿Cómo se dice country en español? ¿Cómo se dice country en español? En español, country es país. 
country is país. Se dice país. Let's consider this conversation in a multinational classroom where students are from different countries. The teacher asks students, Juan, tell me, ¿de dónde eres? Juan, tell me, ¿de dónde eres? And Juan replies, Señora, Señora, you remember? Señora es ma'am. Señora, soy de México. Señora, soy de México. Where is John from? México. Absolutely right. Muy bien. Now the next teacher asks, Charles, ¿de dónde eres tú? Charles, ¿de dónde eres tú? And Charles says, Señora, soy de Inglaterra. Soy de Inglaterra. Ingla is to do with English. So, Inglaterra. Terra is land or earth. So, Inglaterra is England. Soy de Inglaterra. I'm from England. Now, she asks another girl, Dasha, ¿de dónde eres tú? And Dasha says, Señora, soy de Rusia. Señora, soy de Rusia. Can you guess where Dasha is from? Right, Dasha is from Russia. Russia is Rusia. The teacher asks another student, Yusuf. Yusuf, ¿de dónde eres tú? Señora, soy de Pakistan. Where is Yusuf from? Yusuf is from Pakistan. You have Jean there, another girl. And the teacher wants to know where is Jean from? Jean, ¿de dónde eres tú? Jean says, Señora, yo soy de Francia, de París. So, you guessed right, Jean is from Paris, from France. So, you see, Francia is France, Russia is Russia, Inglaterra is England. You have another student there, Sue, her name is Sue. ¿De dónde eres tú, Sue? Sue says, Señora, soy de China. So, Su is from China. China is China. So, have you seen the variety of countries? China, Russia, Inglaterra, etc. So, let us now look at different countries and how they are pronounced in Spanish. Japón. Can you guess what Japan is? Japan. Mexico, Russia, Bolivia. Bolivia is a South American country where Spanish is spoken. Bolivia. Brazil. Brazil, you know Brazil. Uruguay. Uruguay. Spain. What is Spain? You know very well by now. Spain is España, España, India, India, yeah, Anand y Ravi, nuestros amigos. We have seen the conversation of Anand and Ravi in the earlier lessons. Anand y Ravi son de la India. So why la India here? Because some countries the article la is left with the name of the country. So, our friends Ravi y Anand son de la India. Somos de la India. We are from India. 
So with India, you say La India. So for the question, De donde eres tu? We have learned to say where we are from, from different nationalities. Even we can just say from any city or state or a village that we belong to. Yo soy de Tarragona. I am from Tarragona. Tarragona is a region in Spain. Yo soy de Bengaluru. Yo soy de Quito. Quito is one of the Latin American city. Not only with countries, you can say yo soy de, I am from, I belong to, and the name of the state, city, country, or a village. Let us now consider another question in the question series that we have seen earlier. ¿Cuántos años tienes? ¿Cuántos años tienes? ¿Cuántos is how many? ¿Cuántos años? Años is years. ¿Cuántos años tienes? How many years have you? How many years you have? Or what we ask in English, how old are you? Now, you must be wondering why we can't use the verb ser. Are you? You are. Eres tú? No. In Spanish, to ask age of any person, you use the verb tener. Now, this is another new verb that today you should be introduced to. Tener is to have and it is a very, very important verb in any language because tener is to have. To have is very important than have not, no? So, ¿cuántos años tienes tú? So, tener años is the expression in Spanish to ask for age. And cuantos is how many? Suppose if you want to say how many friends? Cuantos amigos? How many books? Cuantos libros? So cuantos is how many? And años is years? How many years have you? And now that you have learned numbers, it is very easy to answer this. Cuantos años tienes tú? The reply is, tengo 20 años. Tengo, tengo is I have. This is the verb tener, which shortly will be learning the conjugation. ¿Cuántos años tienes? Tienes is tú. And we have already said that it is not necessary in Spanish to use the subject pronoun with the verb. So, ¿cuántos años tienes tú? Tengo 20 años. I am 20 years old. The verb tener is a irregular verb. Irregular verb, why, why do I say irregular verb? Because you will learn when we are doing verbs in the coming lessons that there are different groups of verbs and tener belongs to an irregular group. Now, just learn this verb as it is. You have also learned that to conjugate a verb, you will require the subject pronouns and you, you follow that paradigm. Yo, tu, el, ella, usted, Nosotros, vosotros, ellos, ellas, ustedes. Right? Yo, the conjugation of tener is I have. Yo tengo. I have. Yo tengo clase de español. I have Spanish class. 
Yo tengo un amigo español. I have a Spanish friend. So, tener, you can make n number of sentences to know about what the person has. ¿Tienes amigos? ¿Tienes amigos? Do you have friends? You'll say, sí, sí, muchos. Muchos, muchos, many. Tengo muchos amigos. I have many friends. ¿Tienes diccionario? Diccionario. Can you guess what is diccionario? Remember one thing. When you're learning Spanish, there are some words which are similar to English. You should just make an effort to guess what it could be. So, diccionario, if you guess right, is dictionary. So, when you say, ¿Tienes diccionario? You will say, Si sí tengo. If you have one. And if you don't have one, you will say, No tengo. You have learned in the last lessons that you put a no before a verb. It is a negative statement. So, if you don't have, you just say, No tengo. ¿Tienes amigos de España? Do you have friends from Spain? No, no tengo. No, I don't have. So, tengo o no tengo. ¿Tú tienes? We have learned from the question, ¿Cuántos años tienes? Do you have? Now, one interesting thing at this point is, when you say tienes, in English it is equivalent to do you have. So, there is this auxiliary do in English, but in Spanish tienes itself means do you have. It does not require any auxiliary. So, if you want to ask anything to anybody whether the other person has, does he have, do you have, do I have, do they have. You just use the verb tener and no other auxiliary verb. So, ¿Cuántos años tienes? How old are you? And ¿Cuántos años tiene Ravi? Tiene for él. ¿Cuántos años tiene Dasha? Dasha, ella, she. ¿Cuántos años tiene Dasha? So, yo es tengo, tú es tienes, él, ella, usted es tiene. Suppose, in the conversation, it's a formal situation, you don't ask cuántos años tienes, you ask cuántos años tiene usted. So, tengo, tienes, tiene, nosotros tenemos, nosotros tenemos, nosotras tenemos, we have. Vosotros o vosotras tenéis, ellos, ellas, ustedes es, tienen, they have. Ellos tienen. Ellos, Ravi y Anand, tienen mucho tiempo. Ravi y Anand have lot of time. So, mucho, mucho tiempo, mucho gusto, muchos amigos. You remember this word, mucho. Mucho, mucho dinero. Mucho dinero is lo lot of money. Dinero is money. So, tienen. Let's quickly do the verb once again. Tengo, tienes, tiene, tenemos, tenéis, tienen. 
There is another question that you can make with thin air that is tienes correo electrónico, tienes correo electrónico, do you know what is correo electrónico, electrónico, electronic, correo mail, so tienes correo electrónico is do you have email which means in answer you just do not say see sí, yes I have and keep quiet. Whenever you are asked a question, tienes correo electronico, it means you share your email address with the other person. Similarly, if somebody asks you, tienes móvil, tienes móvil, is do you have a mobile and you do not keep quiet saying yes I have one, I have an iPhone, no, you share your number with them. So, these are the words on expressions that we have learned with tener. Estar, it is very interesting that in Spanish we have two verbs to say to be, the form to be. You have already learned one, ser to talk of names like I am and professions, I am so and so, I am Jean, I am Dasha, so and so, soy Dasha, soy Juan, soy Roberto and you have also learned to say professions, soy profesor, soy abogada, soy directora, etc. Now, there is another verb estar which is also used to say I am. You are surprised? Yes, I am sure this is also a very important verb in Spanish language and grammar. The verb is estar and you say estoy. Now, what is estoy? It, you, you know that it is also a, a little different in conjugation. Estoy is I am and there are specific usages of ser and estar. Now, for today let us just focus on one usage of estar to say I am fine that is state of being. How are you? I am fine. So, you will only use the verb estar to know the state of being and not ser. Similarly, you will only use the verb ser to talk of your name and profession and not estar. So, how do you say how are you? The two form of estar is estas. So, you say como estas? You will say imagine a situation like you meet somebody and you say hola Como estas? How are you? You have learned the expression que tal to ask how are you, right? But que tal is a very generalized expression as we have already told you. It can be used in, in any context, but como estas is an expression used specifically to know the other person's state of being. Are you fine or are you not okay? So, como estas is how are you and in reply you say estoy bien, estoy bien is I am fine, I am fine, thank you, estoy bien, gracias, como estas, estoy bien, gracias, como esta Juan, como esta Juan, a friend, Juan, como esta, how is he? Está bien. So, you have seen yo is estoy, tú is estás, él is está, estoy, estás, está, I am, you are, he or she or usted is, está. ¿Usted está bien, señor? Are you okay, sir? Sí, 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 estoy bien. I am fine. Gracias. Nosotros estamos, nosotros estamos, we are. 
Estamos muy bien. We are very fine. Thank you. Nosotros no estamos bien. We are not okay. Nosotros no estamos. Tenemos problemas. What is tenemos from the verb tener? We have. Tenemos problemas. We have problems if you want to say that. Nosotros no estamos bien. We are not okay. Tenemos problemas. Or you can say nosotros estamos muy bien. We are very fine. Thank you. Vosotros estáis. Vosotros estáis. Ellos, ellas, ustedes están. The third person plural and the second person formal, ustedes, is están. Ellos están muy bien. They are fine. Somebody will ask you, how are your children? Oh, están muy bien. They are very fine. Gracias. So, normally in any conversation, in a day-to-day -day conversation, when you greet somebody, immediately you ask the other person how he, she is. Hola, buenos días. ¿Qué tal? Or, ¿cómo estás? Very fine. Thank you. So, this is the verb tener and estar. And initially, we have learned different countries with different nationalities. In the next class, we will look at the difference of ser estar and also we will look at different nationalities. Okay, amigos, that's all for today. Meet you in the next class. Gracias. Ciao. Hasta luego.